you know, there's a difference between being cheap and being frugal. <laughs> I consider myself more frugal than cheap. Uh, maybe a little cheap, but <laughs> mostly frugal. And by frugal, what I mean is not wasting money that you don't need to waste, spending money unnecessarily. You may have different opinions about this, that's okay. And uh, everyone has their own sort of comfort level in the products that they like to use in their aquariums. But uh, I like to promote being uh, a bit frugal because what that does is it, it, it really helps and opens the door to folks who are on a lower budget and allows them to grow in the hobby as well and not really hit kind of a ceiling you know, that is financial. Like they, they can't go beyond it because, well, I can't, I, I can't afford that. Now, granted, there are setups and tanks that I would never even consider. They're just too expensive. We all sort of have our ceiling, but we want to make the hobby the, you know, getting into the hobby and being able to progress in the hobby uh, for a good while, very affordable for people. And um, I have some tips for you. I have a few tips that I think you'll, you'll, um, you'll agree with. Some of you will, some of you will not, <laughs> on how to actually uh, move along in the hobby and, uh, and keep some money in your pocket. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that sub button. We just went over 40,000 subscribers. If you told me five years ago that was possible, I would have said you were crazy, but it happened. And that's because of you, you folks that hit that sub button. So uh, for those of you that haven't, hit the sub button, hit the bell, and uh, let YouTube know that something good is going on here. It's greatly appreciated. Probably the place where I save money the most is with media and um, you know, you can, you can buy, uh, let's say, a hang-on-back filter and continue to buy the cartridges that are recommended by that manufacturer. For example, I have some Marineland, uh, Marineland Emperor hang-on-back filters, but they have a couple slots in the back where, where you're supposed to insert media. Now, what I have found is that instead of buying the inserts that are sold by Marineland, I use uh, these cartridges, the, these, these frames, and I simply put media in here. Now, I was usually using uh, pinky floss. I would just cut some of this pinky floss, which you can uh, buy anywhere. I even have it at my Amazon store. But um, what I've found, though, is that if I use something like this, where I just take a little bit of this uh, egg crate sponge and just cut it to shape and just put it inside, the, uh, inside of this cartridge, inside of this uh, frame, and then I can rinse it and reuse it. Pinky floss, once it becomes really, really mucked up and dirty, it's pretty much a throwaway item. But uh, at least that's been my experience on how I've used it. But with something like that, you can just keep using them over and over again and uh, after a rinse. And uh, in tank water or however you prefer, some people like to rinse it in tank water. Some people say you can rinse your sponges in tap water and that it doesn't make a difference. You make your own call on that. I'll stay out of that one. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! So you can also buy products that are stiff, stiff uh, uh, filter media, like this here. This is kind of stiff. And what you do is you would cut this to fit in the slots of your filter, and it would stay standing without needing a frame. This is a carbon-infused piece of, uh, of media from the Aquarium Co-op, and it's very stiff, very, very stiff. It's like a, it's stiffer than cardboard. And so you, you slip it in the slots that are in the filter and it just stands there and does what the, uh, what the normal um, marine land filter would do anyway. So if you have a kind of filter where you, where you have to put inserts, you can buy things like this, uh, you know, like these products and just, uh, and, and, and instead of having to repurchase the factory recommended ones, you can reuse, rinse and reuse these products over and over again and save yourself over the course of a year probably several hundred, several hundred dollars. Also in the area of media, you know, you can take things like uh, inside your canister filters, inside your sumps. Uh, you can you can certainly go out and buy your Marine Pure and uh, you, you know things like that, uh, which which I think are great. You know these higher end, highly researched uh, types of media I think are great. Uh, but this here, I mean, this is just a little bit of some rock, uh, like similar to lava rock 
and pumice. You can just buy garden pumice from a garden store. Put them inside of a mesh bag like this one. Uh, this is a fine mesh, so you don't get anything uh, leaking out of it. Uh, and, and, uh, and use that instead, and that'll save you a tremendous amount of money. And uh, in my case, I've taken it one step further uh, in, my, uh, in, in my filters, in particular in my sum, I use a rigid sponge like this one here. I picked up from Bulk Reef Supply and I cut them to shape and they just stand up in the sump and uh, they just work like a baffle. They, ju they just stand there on their own and you rinse them and reuse them. And I have a, 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 a coarse, medium and fine in, in the sump and I'll rinse those out probably a few times a year and reuse them forever. I mean, I don't really see this material ever really wearing out. Another place where you can save some money, of course, is in the purchase of fish. If you look at the tanks behind me here, in this tank here, what I have is I have some fish that I, I picked up that are uh, sort of what you would call peewee fish or, or juveniles. And um, when you buy juveniles, you pick up juveniles, you buy them, you get them for a lot less money. And as a result, uh, you save a lot of money. A fish that would cost you $40, $50 as an adult, like a, a red spotted gold severum or a very nice, uh, a very nice green tear grown, you know, fully grown is gonna cost you anywhere from $30 to $60. Uh, you can pick that fish up for probably five to $10 if you buy them as a juvie, as a, as a young fish. And of course, you then take on the, the burden of feeding them and growing them out and, and you take the risk that, that something might happen along the way and they might not get there. Now, in the case of African cichlids, like, like with these fish here, these all came in as adults because uh, I've spent a lot of time, I've spent a lot of time growing out African cichlids and had them turn out to be females. So, uh, so I've, as I've gotten older, I've preferred to pick up adult colored up males. Cost a lot more. And again, if you want to save money along that line, pick them up small and grow them out yourself. Now, one last place that you can actually save a lot of money, there are a lot more, but I'm just gonna cover one more, is the DIY area. There are a lot of DIY projects you can do from filtration uh, to build right. your own tanks, for that matter. Now, you gotta figure in the cost of materials, the, the cost of your time, right? If you're making uh, you know, $200 an hour in your trade, probably not a good idea. But uh, you know, if you wanna do it as a hobby, it doesn't really matter how much you make an hour. It's just the satisfaction of completing something on your own. I did all the plumbing and did a DIY sump uh, for, for this tank here, for the 200 gallon. And uh, that, that saved me, probably saved me $300, 300, maybe $400. And uh, you know, and not having to buy like a big ESOP sump and, uh, and all that stuff. I just went ahead and just did it, did it myself using a, a, a 29 gallon tank, uh, some of this uh, rigid, rigid filter material, uh, a few filter socks, some filter socks uh, holders, and I have a fully functioning sump that does a great job. So uh, the DIY route is another way that you can save a tremendous amount of money. Same thing on stands. You can go and buy the materials and build your own stand if you feel comfortable with that kind of, of, of you know, doing that kind of craft work or, or woodworking, uh, make your own stand as opposed to paying $400, let's say 500, 600 for a stand that would accommodate a large tank like this, you're gonna pay uh, perhaps $450, $500 for a very large stand where you can buy $100 worth of lumber and materials, maybe 150 with today's prices and, uh, and, and make something that'll be sturdy and uh, will, will actually look pretty good. So, um, those are my tips. If you can think of some other ways to be frugal, but also to be smart, not to, uh, you know, not to sacrifice the actual uh, care or quality of the fish. There are a couple places uh, where I could have cut corners that I didn't. For example, uh, substrate. I like using aragonite, uh, aragonite substrate uh, from companies like Car uh, Carib C. Uh, you know, they tumble, they tumble that, uh, so, it's, so, it's, so it's very smooth substrate so that fish that sift a lot like cichlids or like geophagus like I have across here uh, the geophagus they're not going to get irritated uh, by sharp edges I've heard that things like blasting sand play sand might, might have edges that are a little sharp I don't, I've never tested it but I don't want to risk it 
I have some geophagus in this tank here. They spend all their time sifting this, this sand. So I wanted to make sure this sand was very, very uh, soft and rounded and in no way gonna irritate, irritate them. So, um, and the other area where I, where I suggest that you don't cut corners ever is with, of course, with food. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I always suggest buy the best food you can. In my case, I get the extreme food from, um, from my friend uh, James over at the Cichlid Shack in Arizona. I've also used uh, Northfin uh, Piscine Energetics, which is now also available at the Cichlid Shack. But don't cut corners on food. Get the best food you can afford. So those are my tips for uh, being a bit frugal and uh, keeping some money in your pocket. If you have any ideas, uh, share them below. Uh, we all learn from each other around here, so I'd like to hear what you have to say about that. And uh, I hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. A lot of fun, a lot of great uh, fish keepers uh, talking about all kinds of things from filtration to fish to uh, lighting to you name it. Okay, a lot of fun. Saturdays at 11 o'clock Central Time, and that's 9 a.m. Pacific or noon Eastern for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. So um, thank you for tuning in. Big shout out to my Patreon Garage Gang members. Thank you for your support. And thank you to all of you for getting the channel over 40,000 40, subscribers. A great milestone. I am uh, so uh, grateful to all of you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.